guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be showing you guys how to get this smoky eyeshadow look. This video was suggested by my good friend Rita. She is a blessing, let me tell you. She was the first one, she was actually coincidentally behind me when I went off the road last summer and she was right there to help me and all, and I could not be more appreciative of her. She made sure that I was able to get a hold of my mom, make sure that, you know, make sure she knows I'm okay and all that great stuff. It's actually funny, Rita, about my car. Um, they told me that I was not able to drive it and obviously that's why they had a tow and all that good stuff. Went to my brother's. I ended up going to my brother's getting it checked out and I ended up driving it like that. Um, up until November when I got my new car. <laughs> so, yeah. So, she was drivable. And she made it. I mean, she went how many months driving in that condition? <laughs> I guys, I don't know, the Bluntmobile, let me tell you, she, she's a trooper. She's been through a lot. And I know I've put her through a lot um, since I've had her. But anyway, that is beside the point. So, um... I obviously said that I was going to try to make these uh, makeup tutorials as short as possible, but it's also kind of hard um, to do that when I'm trying to like explain everything and give like tips and tricks and stuff like that. So I did try to make this video as short as possible. Um, I have no idea, I mean obviously I'm filming this intro right now so I have no idea how long of a video it's going to be. But I'm going to try and make it as short as possible for you guys. So if you want to see how I got this more warm, smoky eye, um, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I've already did one eye off of camera. Um, I kind of want to show you like two or a couple different like ways that you could do this, I guess. So what I did on this side, um, I have um, this eyelash primer on. Um, I want to show you what one side would look like, um, you know, without like a wing liner, just like a regular basic wing liner and no fake eyelashes. Um, and also, I want to show you guys one side um, without black eyeshadow and then one side with. Um, if you're a beginner, I wouldn't exactly recommend using black eyeshadow, um, you guys can still be able to get like a smoky kind of um, look. Personally, for me, um, I don't like to use cool tone shades for, you know, like a smoky look, which I guess that a smoky look pretty much is like a cool tone look. I'm going to show you a more warm, smoky eyeshadow look. But like back to the black thing, I have been doing makeup for years and I still to this day hate using black eyeshadow. I will, but it's it drives me nuts and I don't exactly like to do it. So I'm gonna show you, you know, a more smoky look without black eyeshadow and with black eyeshadow. So for this I'm gonna be using my James Charles palette. Um, obvious, uh, you can use like bronzers and stuff like that for, you know, a more warm, smoky look. Um, I can do a more cool tone, smoky eyeshadow look. If that's what you guys want, just let me know down in the comments below or message me. I'm going to be using this middle row and this random little, I don't even know if you guys can see, little random brown eyeshadow. But for my transition shade, I'm going to be taking that random um, lighter brown. Um, if, I know a lot of people probably don't have this eyeshadow palette, but I would just pretty much recommend using the lightest brown shade that you have. Um, that will obviously, like, show up on your eyelid. But you always want to start, especially if you're a beginner, lightest to darkest. And I recommend the, um, for like a transition shade, um, the Wet n Wild, I'm pretty sure this is the crease brush. Um, I get these, br I have so many of these brushes. I get them from the, 
I get them from Dollar Tree. You guys can get these for a dollar. Just saying. They have, you know, different ones. Um, this one is, a little, I think, a little, like, blending brush. Um, this one isn't a crease brush. But they have concealer brushes, flat top brushes, but definitely recommend going to Dollar Tree for these brushes. And what I'm going to do is pretty much just, like, press it on my lid and then kind of drag it along my crease and blending upward kind of like windshield wiper motions and you know doing these little like circular motions help too but pretty much what you want to do is like build this transition shade you don't have to be like real precise just yet, but you really want to make sure that you get that color down. This will help everything in the long run. Next, I'm going to be taking this warmer brown. I wouldn't say warm. Well, yeah, it is warmer. Um, the brown that we used before was more like neutral, and now we're going to be taking this darker brown shade. You could absolutely use like a bronzer like your warm or warmer bronzer or your cool tone contour shade really personal preference here but for me personally warm is always better and I'm taking a brush that's still fluffy but more like flat like it's still wide but it's just a little bit flat on one side I guess I'm not good at this if you guys have noticed by now I'm not good at explaining things so I'm sorry <laughs> coming to me for like actual tutorials probably isn't like the best idea but I'm willing to give it a shot so I'm pretty much gonna be tapping it on the outer corner and that's like kind of like my way of like making sure that I don't have too much product is like just pressing it into my outer corner because if you're doing like a look that's kind of like this um, like a half cut crease kind of thing um, you want the outer corner to be the darkest part anyway so just press 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 I feel like that's a song isn't that a Cardi B song? but then you want to start dragging it into the crease and I always say kind of like keep it lower and then you know blend up I guess I don't always, I don't know why I said I always say but what I do it just kind of makes it easier for blending and then kind of like the same thing windshield wiper motions circular motions for blending but you also don't want to like completely lose your transition shade you want you know this shade to be more focused below your transition shade if, if you know what I mean it's better just to like watch what I do rather than listen to how I explain it <laughs> this blending tip might not work for everybody I recently like just discovered it I might have mentioned it in another video I can't really remember but kind of like tapping like around the edge if you know you're packing on a shade and your edges are a little bit you know sharp and all that good stuff Kind of just like tapping lightly, lightly with your brush on the edges. And it doesn't really make the edge as sharp. And then go in with the brush you used before for your transition and kind of blend it out. And if you feel like that shade isn't as pigmented as you want it, you can obviously go back in and keep building. And the key to looks like this, you know, like smoky look, especially if you are a beginner, is, you know, take your time. Don't rush it. You know, if you're, if you have this like event or whatever that you're going to, if you're going to go hang out with friends, like, and you want to do a smoky eye or something, make sure you give yourself plenty of time. So if you have any mistakes, you don't have to like rush or freak out and all this stuff and it also makes it easier to prevent mistakes if you're, you know, not hurrying. I'm going to be taking this darker brown shade that's next to this black. 
And pretty much like with these steps, like the darker you go, the more controlled you want to you want your shadows to be. Like I'm taking like this smaller kind of brush that's more like domed, I guess, kind of thing. It kind of comes to a point. <laughs> Hopefully you know what I mean. And again, taking this shade, packing it onto the outer corner. And then, dragging it. you don't have to like completely drag it in all the way. Um, I personally do, especially if I do like a half cut crease, then it kind of gives it a little bit more definition without me having to like go in with like a small brush and doing it that way. And just kind of slowly drag it in. And then like after I'm packing it, I'm like, I tap off the brush like extra hard. And then, especially with like the darker shades, like with that tapping, blending method, um, and then just kind of go in. Tapity tap, tap. Now we're going to be taking the brush that we used before and kind of doing the same thing, blending those edges out, going back in with the brush of the darker shade. Make sure that I keep that pigment because you know blending you can obviously lose some of that pigment. Okay, so now we totally could leave it like this and move on to the shimmery shade. Um, if you wanted, like, of course you don't have to do, like, a shimmery, um, inner corner kind of color, or inner half. Wow, I'm bad. I'm bad at this. Could totally take, like, a matte white or, you know, pretty much up to you. I like to use, like, a shimmery shade. But yeah, like I was saying, you definitely could leave it like this. Um... Or, you know, do what we're about to do and go in with black. Now, I have a very special brush dedicated to black eyeshadow. Um, and it is the e.l.f. crease brush. Um, yeah, it's like, it's like a skinny kind of like blending brush that comes to a point. Um, I like it. It's worked for me. Um... It kind of helps me get like in the crease, like right in here, if I like really wanted to. But now I'm going to be taking the black in the James Charles palette, which um, I actually haven't used. Um, the best black eyeshadow that I think I've ever used um, was from the Naked 2 palette, the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. Literally the best and most pigmented eyeshadow, black eyeshadow, I think I have ever used. Mine is like completely like gone and destroyed because it was like one of the first eyeshadow palettes I ever had and on top of traveling me moving a million times in the last five years. Um, oh, I, not even five years, like ten years. All my life. So I am going to dip into the black, tap off the excess. Definitely make sure you tap off the excess for beginners. And pretty much same thing. Tap, okay. Maybe with this black we can't really tap off the excess. And you definitely want to do this makeup look, like eyeshadow look before foundation. I do all my eyeshadow looks before foundation so I don't even have to like worry about it. I can just like be messy with like fallout get a bunch of fallout and then I could just wipe it. We're good. I would definitely recommend 
doing foundation after you do a smoky eye. Now I'm after, you know, doing a little tapping, I'm just gonna drag a little bit towards the inner corner. I'm not gonna go all the way like it is the other one. And then tap off the excess. I'm gonna do the same. But you wanna be a little bit more careful where this is like black. Then when they're like tapping. Then take the brush we used before the black. And do the little tapping method. And then the brush before that blend. Brush before that. I think that was the easiest, like, time I've ever used black eyeshadow, to be honest with you. And of course with like smoky eyes, or really like, any eyeshadow look, it's gonna look worse before it looks better. So just be patient with it. Don't give up, don't get frustrated. It's okay, it's just makeup. At the end of the day, it's just makeup. Now, personally what I'm gonna do for this look is more of like a soft cut crease. Like this to me is more of like a soft cut crease. Um, rather than like my other ones, I don't know. Um, like you've seen before. Um, you, got, you don't have to use concealer uh, when it comes to doing this. You could just take either wet your brush before you put on the eyeshadow and then put the eyeshadow right on top or even don't even want the brush just take your shimmery shade or your matte shade and just go right over but it obviously won't be like as pigmented um, as it would be if you use concealer and I'm so, I'm really okay I'm gonna say this now which I really probably should have said this in the beginning you always want to start off with a base whether it is a eye primer Concealer, even if I've even used foundation. Um, my personal favorite thing to use is concealer um, for the base of my eyeshadows, just because you know it's way easier than having to go get like another product, like an eye primer. I can just you know use my concealer. But yeah, anyway, um, so I want to use concealer for um, my shimmery shade. So what I'm going to do is the same trick that I showed in another video um, with the Q-tip. Um, I feel like this would work way better if you had like actual makeup remover, but this is all that I can do. Um, I just have actual makeup wipes. I don't have like legit makeup remover. I had my cellar water, but I used all that. So, but pretty much what I do is take the Q-tip, wrap it in my makeup wipe. And then kind of clean up a little bit of the shadow, like where I want the concealer to be. And I focus this mostly toward my lash line, just because I don't want to lose, like, you know, the shadow where I actually like, want it to be. <laughs> I really only use this trick if I'm using, like, you know, like black eyeshadow or more colorful kind of looks just because you know it can like tamper with <laughs> um, the concealer and the um, shade that goes on top of it. But now I'm just going to be taking my concealer putting a little bit of it on my like flat brush. It's yeah it's like a flat packer brush. I don't even know what it's. It's the Real Techniques Detailer brush and for this I'm not going to take like a lot just because I do want it to be a little bit softer. But pretty much just what I'm going to do is like take the concealer. Okay, so my camera just stopped recording. I don't know where I left off, but 
yeah. But anyway, pretty much what I do is, you know, obviously put the concealer on my brush and then put it on my eye and then just kind of like push and it kind of just like traces like where my natural crease is and like where my eyeball kind of is. <laughs> so it kind of just like, I don't know, it helps me create like a more perfect cut crease. But now I'm going to be taking this shimmery shade. Mm. I wish they, I'm pretty sure these have names, but I never got the slip that had the names. So, but I'm pretty much just gonna dig right into this dry. My brush is completely dry. And then tap it on. I feel like this side, like this, the cut crease on this side definitely isn't as like soft, but it's fine. Next, what I do is take the brush that I use, the black, dip into a, a little bit of it, very little, and then tap it on the outer corner, just so we didn't like lose any of that pigment. And then if you see like, you know, any sharper edges, just kind of blend them out with those methods that we used the whole time. <laughs> so now real quick, I'm going to do my liner. I wasn't do a wing liner on this side just so you guys could like kind of see, but I actually have to like go out and do things today. So I don't want to look like too, you know, weird. Um, but anyway, I will come back. I'm going to do my liner on this side, pop on some lashes on this side and then come back. So you guys can kind of see what one side looks like with lashes, one side without. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I wanted to, you know, do my face and all that stuff so I could be able to come back and show you guys, you know, the lower lash line. Um, now, you totally could leave it like this if you really wanted to. Um, bare, just put on some mascara on your lower lashes or, you know, actually do the bottom lash line, which to me personally, I think it actually like really finishes the look and kind of, you know, just, I don't know. I feel like it just brings it together and makes it look so much better if you do the lower lash line. So first, pretty much we're going to be doing like the same thing, like same order that we did on our lids as we're going to do on our lower lash line. Um, I'm going to be going in with the first, you know, transition shade on a more round kind of dome brush. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is the Luxie um, Mini Round Brush. So I'm pretty much just going to dip into that. And I don't know if you guys will be able to, like, see me do this. <laughs> and just kind of drag it all the way along. The lower lash line. Honestly, stopping when you get toward your inner corner. And this I bring down um, lower than the you know other shadows, but not too low, so it doesn't look like you know you have a black eye. <laughs> then I'm going to be going in with this shade on a more. It's flat, but it's more like dense. This is the. Yeah, the e.l.f. smudge brush. And I'm pretty much doing the same thing um, with this shade, except not bringing it down like as low. Try to get as close to that lash line as possible. Then on a more um, flat brush, I'm going to be taking the this shade the darkest brown and bringing it in about um, 
two-thirds of the way in. Um, not quite as far in as the other two shades. And also as close to that lower lash line as possible. Then last shade um, on another um, flat brush. This is the Morphe Y21. And the one I used for, I'm pretty sure this is a, I thought it was a pixie brush, but it's not. I don't know, they're pretty much the same thing. But um, this one I'm just going to be taking the black with, and this I'm going to bring it in about halfway. And obviously as close to the lower lash line as possible. Kinda like that. I don't really know if you can see it that well. But gives a good amount of definition, if you will. And now I'm gonna be taking <clears throat> the same brush that I put the shimmery shade on with, and I'm just gonna be getting some more of that shimmery shade and put it um, in the inner corner. So kind of like right in here. And I always do this with my shimmery shades, as long as they're not like too dark, like if with this I don't mind, but if it was something darker I probably wouldn't do that. I would take, you know, like a lighter shade. And of course this is obviously like optional, I just think it kind of like opens your eyes a little bit more. And now that the lower lash line is done. Mascara. Um, also, I don't know if you noticed, um, I am going to pop a lash onto this side before I do my highlighter and lip, but I did kind of just want to come back and show you what it looks like, you know, with the lash and without the lash. Um, personally, for me, I always, I just have to have lashes. Um, it literally could be, like, if I'm just doing any makeup look, any makeup look, I'm probably gonna slap on some fake lashes. Like, I don't even bother with, like, the no makeup makeup look these days. If I'm gonna look like I'm not wearing makeup, I'm just gonna not wear makeup. And if I actually wanna wear makeup, do something like this. But I think that it looks perfectly fine without the fake lashes. Um, I just like to be that little bit more extra when it comes to my makeup. Um, it's kinda like the same thing with my highlighter. Obviously, my highlighter. I put probably way too much on. Um, I will be the first to say that I probably most definitely put on way too much highlighter, but I don't care. Personally, I do not care. Um, I like to be able to walk around and know that I could be potentially blinding people with my highlight. And I am perfectly okay with that. Like, that is like a goal of mine. So, personal preference. But yeah, now I'm just gonna pop on, you know, this lash highlighter, lip, and then I will be back to do the intro. in today's video and I just want to say a huge thank you to Rita for um, suggesting this video if there's any kind of videos you guys want me to do you guys would like to see then please let me know in the comments down below or just message me thank you guys so much for watching please like and subscribe for more bye guys